Hey, the girls went back down to the subsistence net, checked it, and we had a king, and she had some eggs. So I'm gonna make some ikura. So what you need in order to make your ikura, you gotta get those eggs off the skein. So I have a quarter inch hardware cloth here. This is stainless steel. Some, fe some folks don't use metal at all in this process. I've never had any issues. Um, the other thing is kosher salt. So this doesn't have any iodine in it. So that's good. And a bowl or a, or a pan or a pot. For so early in the season, these are looking pretty mature. Now, I think that rubbing these things through is gonna break them all and you're gonna break a lot for sure. Rub it off, they're already going through down into the pot. And you can be pretty aggressive. You'll have some loss for sure. They are somewhat resilient for being such a fragile little life pod. The more you get off the skein, it seems to be the harder it is to get the rest of them off the skein. Oh, you're making a row? Yeah. Damn. Okay, so I'm not gonna deal with the rest of that. I'm just gonna move on to the next skein. A lot of folks think the king eggs are too rich for their taste, and of course that's fine, right? Different strokes for different folks. I love the king eggs. They are rich though. So I could keep going. I got most of it off of there. I'm not gonna fight that battle. And this is just gonna go in the how to feed your bear pile. Now we gotta rinse these, and you gotta use as cold water as you can. Ours is coming out of a well, so it's it's pretty cold. It does have a little, you know, well water flavor to it. But the longer these are out of the refrigerator and the warmer they get, the the egg membrane starts to break down. So the sooner you do this, the fresher you do it, the better off the product is gonna be. Now we're gonna rinse, try to get all the broken eggshells, clotted up blood and whatnot out of here. You can see that there's, oh, maybe you can, I can. There's blood and broken eggshells washed away. Do that a few times just till she starts to clear up. So what I've found is that you can almost never get it all. There's, there's a lot of broken parts and pieces in there. So for brevity, I'm not even gonna try. And then I'm gonna put some kosher salt in and start timing it. So I learned how to do this from my Russian buddy, Eugenio Maltsev, and he says kosher salt. So kosher salt I do. 100% brine, they say, uh, you know, how much is that? I don't know. I'm not gonna measure it. I'm just gonna start mixing it. 125 in the afternoon here now. Just really to taste how long you're gonna do this when Gene started teaching me how to do it, it he, he liked, you know, 10 or 12 minutes. He only does it for like two to three minutes. Now, of course, depending on how mature the row is, the more mature it is, the easier it is for the salt to penetrate the membrane, the egg membrane. And if it's what they call green or not mature, then it takes longer for that salt to penetrate it. I think these are pretty, pretty mature eggs here. And I can already feel that most of that salt is gone. There's some right there. There's, there's, there's some in there still. But, so, I still like it to go about 10 minutes. So, and that water is pretty cold. That hand is getting chilly. That's about nine minutes right there. I'm gonna start rinsing. Well, you don't really rinse them off. You just drain it. Still some broken eggs in there and whatnot. You're going Gene's route, are you? Yeah. Gino baby. Oops, that's got some loss happening there. Now we pour these babies off into a sieve. Oh, that was, that was silly, wasn't it? Yes, that was silly. Pour it into a sieve first, silly guy. Scoop those out later. Let it drain for just a skosh here. Then you put this baby back in the bowl, put it in the fridge for, I mean, here's the deal. This is again to, to taste. If you can make it overnight, 
that's best. I never can. So I, you, but you gotta at least let this salt work on pulling the moisture out of that egg for a couple of hours, at, at the minimum two hours, it's gotta be. Um, that way, that with the more moisture you get out, the more it'll pop in your mouth when you eat it instead of be mush, right? Which is like, there's nothing worse than going to a sushi restaurant, ordering salmon eggs and have them be mush and warm and fishy flavored. That ain't happening here, guaranteed. These are going in the fridge. At least two hours, my son. Better off overnight. It's not gonna make it overnight this time. It'll make it for six hours. So normally my presentation would be a little different than this, but they announced an opener in Ugashik, so we had to boogie. This has actually been in the fridge for a day and a half now. Like I guaranteed that it wouldn't make it six hours, but my guarantees aren't worth much apparently. So um, normally I'd put these uh, king eggs or sockeye eggs, salmon eggs, on a piece of rye tack, cover it with a little uh, thin layer of this cream cheese here, thin layer of roe, and some green onions. So, but we don't have all that stuff here this, this time. So right here in the shadow of Cape Greg, I'm gonna, have some some king caviar. I love it. That's how you make caviar. <laughs>